Now, here's our reporter, Laura Windsor, with more on urinary tract infections in kids. Urinary tract infections are somewhat common in kids. By the time they're five years old, about 8% of girls and about 1 to 2% of boys have had at least one. We spoke with Dr. Irene McAleer at Children's Hospital of Orange County and asked her to explain what a urinary tract infection is. A urinary tract infection is primarily when bacteria gets into the bladder and may even get up to the kidneys, causing multiple symptoms depending on the age of the patient and how severe the infection is. The symptoms for a urinary tract infection depend on the age of the patient. An infant is not going to be able to tell you that it hurts to go to the bathroom. They may have a very low grade fever. They may be fussy. They may be irritable. They may not feed. An older child will be able to tell the family that it hurts to go to the bathroom. They may have accidents once they're toilet trained. And there may be uh, foul smelling urine on a child that would otherwise have been normal. The diagnosis for a urinary tract infection generally is initially the talking to the family, getting a physical, doing an examination. The examination includes a urine test to make sure that there's no bacteria, white cells, and then taking that urine specimen and putting it on a plate to culture out bacteria. The younger the child, primarily infants or neonates, they generally will require a hospital stay because they just can't handle the stress of the infection. They don't have the immune system. So the intravenous antibiotics may be required for a few days. Some of the older children who are very, very sick with high fevers may just get a one injection of an antibiotic to treat it. Most of them, however, can be treated with oral antibiotics for several days, up to a week to 10 days. How dangerous can a urinary tract infection be? Fortunately, most urinary tract infections do not cause damage to the kidneys. However, there's a small percentage, up to about 17%, that can go on and get kidney damage and scarring. Of those, about 20% may go on and get hypertension as a younger person, maybe a young adult or an older adult, and very rarely you can actually go on to get renal failure di dialysis. Depending on the age of the child, an infant will get a urinary tract infection because their immune status is not up to the normal status as an older adult or child, even after three to four months old. The bacteria arrives primarily from the fecal strain from around the anus and the urethra, and it gets into the urethra, and from the urethra gets into the bladder. On an older child, once they're toilet trained, a lot of it has to do with constipation, how they go to the bathroom or don't go to the bathroom, and hydration status. Boys tend to get urinary tract infections more within the first six months to year of life. Some of it may be due to their being circumcised or not circumcised. Some may be due to their bladder voiding pressures, which tends to be higher. After a year, it flips, and girls are more likely to get urinary tract infections than boys. The children with urinary tract infections, a very large proportion of them will go on to get urinary tract infections as adults, particularly women. And a lot of the young girls that get urinary tract infections, their mothers had infections as well. So there may be a genetic component to that. As a pediatric urologist, most of the children that we see with urinary tract infections may actually have anatomic abnormalities. And a fair number of those may require surgical therapy or treatments. The other group tend to be the children that get recurrent infections, four or five infections that their regular pediatrician just has tried everything and has run out of ideas and they'll send them to us so we can work on their voiding habits, their bowel habits, and try to fine tune that so they're not getting as many infections. Is there any advice you can give parents regarding their children and urinary tract infections? Generally speaking, once they know what some of the patterns are that their child normally has, if there's a deviation from it, they're either really, really fussy or very lethargic or they're just not feeding, it should be enough to tip them off that something is wrong. And it may not be a urinary tract infection, but they should know to go to their regular doctor to have it checked out, including a urine test. Urinary tract infections are highly treatable, but it's important to catch them early. For the American Health Journal, I'm Laura Windsor.